Tonight, Virgin Galactic spaceship crashes. The FCC considers partially reclassifying ISPs. And why does Facebook have a hidden website? Tech News Tonight is next. This, this is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 206 for Friday, October 31st, 2014. Happy Halloween, everybody. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHTS. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. This is a terrible story to start off with. Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 suffered what's being called a serious anomaly and crashed over the Mojave Desert during a test flight today. Two pilots were on board the plane during the crash, and the California Highway Patrol is reporting one fatality. Virgin Galactic founder Richard Branson was said to be en route to Mojave following the accident today, and the FAA said in a statement that it is also investigating. This was the 55th flight for Spaceship 2, and the third 35th time that the vehicle flew detached from the airplane that makes it airborne. Virgin Galactic's first commercial space flights were tentatively scheduled for some time in 2015. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that the Federal Communications Commission is close to proposing a hybrid approach to network neutrality. This means the internet service providers would be partially classified, reclassified as common carriers, which would allow the commission to take more measures against internet fast lanes. The proposal would not completely outlaw deals where web services would pay for faster access to consumers, though. The plan would potentially separate broadband into two services, a retail service where customers pay broadband providers for internet access, and then a back-end service where broadband providers allow websites to distribute content. The FCC would then classify the back-end service as a common carrier, giving the agency the ability to police deals between content companies and broadband providers. A U.S. Circuit Court judge, Stephen C. Frucci, has ruled that a criminal defendant can be forced to give up his or her fingerprint, but not his or her passcode if police want to open and search his or her cell phone. This ruling is based on the case of David Baust, who was an emergency medical services captain that was charged back in February with trying to strangle his girlfriend. Prosecutors argued that video equipment that was found in the couple's bedroom might have recorded the incident, and perhaps the video could also be on Faust's cell phone. But his attorney argued that passcodes are protected under the Fifth Amendment, which prohibits forced self-incrimination. Judge Frucci ruled that giving police a fingerprint is not unlike providing a DNA sample or a handwriting sample or even an actual key, which the law does permit. A passcode, though, requires the defendant to divulge knowledge with the, which the law protects against, according to Frucci's written opinion. Good news for Android users that want to search apps without actually searching apps. <laughs> Google is now letting developers use its built-in voice search tool inside third-party apps themselves. So currently the prompt... OK Google searches only reveal certain photos or data inside the phone's stock applications, you know, or Google web searches or Gmail messages. With the new tools, Android users could search for things like food or for hotels inside a restaurant app or a travel app that they've installed on their phone, but without actually launching the app itself. The feature requires Android 4.1 or later and the Google search app version 3.5 or later. Third-party apps must also be set to the English language, at least for now. Roku got a new addition to their Roku channel store today, Google Play Movies and TV, which is Google's digital media store for buying and renting videos. At the same time, Google is currently promoting its new Nexus player and Android TV, the OS in general, which powers several set-top boxes made by several manufacturers. Now, a feature that is unique to the Roku app itself is that Google will provide info cards related to the content you're watching. So, for example, if you're pressing pause while you're watching a movie, you can then identify the actors within that movie. Google is also offering the first X-Men movie set, you know, from 2003 
for free to those that sign up for the service or download the app on Roku. Yes, I did say the first X-Men movie, which is 13 years old, but you know, a uh, classic. I guess. Last week, we mentioned that the Hungarian government was considering an internet tax that has sparked mass protests throughout the country. Hungary has since decided to shelve this tax idea on internet data traffic, and, Prime Minister, and the prime minister said in a statement today, quote, this tax in its current form cannot be introduced. The draft law would have imposed a 154-int, which is equivalent to about 60 cents, fee on each gigabyte of internet data transferred. Basically a bad idea, so said the people. Coming up, we understand that you're very busy this Halloween Friday, so how about some scary stories that will spook you in five words or less? Mm -hmm. And up next, I will chat with social media specialist Esteban Contreras about why Facebook is launching its own dark website. What does Facebook have to do with the dark web? But first, let's take a moment to thank Squarespace for our sponsoring this episode of TN2. We love Squarespace because... It's an all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a really, really professional-looking website or online portfolio of really any kind. Squarespace has beautiful designs. That's the first thing that you notice about the company. The templates that get you started are gorgeous right out of the gate. They also have a logo creator tool, which is really nice. If you think, you know, I love a logo that represents me, represents my company, my small business, something I'm putting together. This is a basic tool that Squarespace has, has put together. And you can, you know, create your own simple identity for yourself. Squarespace is extremely easy to use, but if you're ever looking for help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week and a completely redesigned customer help site gives you access to not only self-help articles, but video workshops. I have had a lot of success with some of their walkthrough videos where I learned everything that I needed to. Oh yeah, look, Brian's making me a little Sarah Lane star logo right now as I speak. See, I, you know, what did that take him, about 20 seconds? It's great. I certainly couldn't do that from scratch. I have no, you know, vector image skills. That Squarespace is great for that sort of thing. It's also mobile ready. It's also inexpensive. Starts at just $8 a month and includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Hosting is included. That's key. Squarespace takes care of the hosting so you don't have to. And you can start a two-week trial completely free. They will not ask you for your credit card. It is free, free, free just to start building your website and get a sense of what you can achieve with very little effort at all. When you decide to sign up for a Squarespace account, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT. The offer code is T-E-C-H-N-I-G-H-T, all one word, and you'll get 10% off and it lets you support tech news tonight. We love Squarespace. We thank Squarespace for their support of TN2. A better web awaits you, and it starts with your new Squarespace website. All right, joining us now for the first time on Tech News Tonight is Esteban Contreras, Director of Strategy over at Sprinkler. Hello, Esteban. Welcome to the show. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here, and I'm so glad that you are here because we're focusing our topic today on Facebook, who's kind of some interesting things going on in the news. First of all, let's talk about a story uh, that I read uh, this morning in Wired, why Facebook just launched its own dark web site. Now, you know, it's, it's at first glance, you think that goes against everything that I know about Facebook, right? Facebook is all about sharing as much data as possible. So what's the deal? Yeah, I think, I mean, Facebook is the world's largest social network and privacy and security has always been important to users. Uh, you know, users may say that they they really care about privacy and security, but for most of us, HTTPS is enough. We see HTTPS and that makes us feel like a website is secure. That's mm -hmm. what we, we've been told. Um, with this announcement, Facebook is basically saying that they're taking security to a new level. Um, and the focus is on Tor, which is a browser that allows you to have online anonymity so you can surf the web. The interesting thing about this is that when someone is using Tor, uh, basically they uh, appear to be in multiple countries at the same time. So they may be in one country, they may be in Canada in one second, and then they appear to be in Europe. Um, this would not be normal behavior for most of us, but in Tor, this is this is kind of how Tor works for people that are using Tor. So this uh, allows Facebook to say that they're enhancing their security infrastructure for uh, those users in particular. So is that a, a dark web or simply a, a way for Facebook to provide access to Tor users? I think that that's, 
that's really what's happening. Anybody that's using Tor has that extra level of of security if they want to take advantage of it. I mean, Facebook currently has what 1.3 or so billion users. Do you think it, you know? And obviously, the 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 goal is to continue growing <laughs> until we reach the entire right. population of Earth. But are there enough uh, users who are not only familiar with the Tor network but are going to appreciate this and possibly use Facebook more than they're using it, or or even sign up for the first time? To, to really make a dent in those numbers. Yeah, and I, I think that that may be what Facebook is after, right? There are countries where censorship is a problem, where surveillance is a problem, and people are using certain technologies. We, we've heard about people using fire chat as a way to just avoid, avoid the internet altogether. Um, this may be a way for Facebook to uh, allow a certain group of people that are using Facebook as everybody else, but they're going through Tor to be able to do exactly that without them having to shut down accounts that maybe don't need to be shut down because it's just a normal person trying to use Facebook like we all do, but they're using it in a place where uh, maybe that's not uh, that's not uh, allowed or, or even legal. So it is an interesting measure that Facebook is doing, and it is it is kind of surprising for many, I think. Speaking of Facebook, Facebook uh, is definitely a place where uh, the company wants us to have as many conversations um, as as possible uh, in its news feed. There's an interesting Mother Jones article today that Facebook wants you to vote on Tuesday. It's a, it's a voting day here in the U.S. Here's how it messed with your feed in 2012. So it's looking back to how our news feeds might have been manipulated by the company, which is, I know this is a it's a sore subject for certain Facebook users who say, do not manipulate me. I don't like the algorithm floating things to the top to encourage me to feel a certain way or do a certain thing. So how is Facebook messing with users' feeds when it comes to politics? Yeah, Facebook's really been doing this for longer than 2012. As we've heard about studies as early as 2010, in which some users were allowed to say whether they had voted. In some cases, they would see the photo of themselves and a photo of their friends. And so, you know, when 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 you think about potential tests in which some people are allowed to see some content around a political nature and others are not, some people will start to say, well, with the with the reach and the scale of Facebook, well, then that could manipulate or change people's opinions. Um, I, I don't know whether that is the case. But it is interesting that Facebook is able to, to play with things like that. Um, however, I think in moving forward, because there, this has been controversial, um, it's hard to tell whether Facebook will reveal uh, findings on studies of that sort. But it's clear that Facebook is, is always testing, as every other website is always testing and trying to provide a better experience. Facebook will always say that their goal is to get people to get out there and vote. Have you seen a lot of voting type uh, stories afloat to the top of your own Facebook news feed, Esteban? I have not noticed, but I definitely noticed them in the past. Um, and I, and you know, back when, when Foursquare was popular, Foursquare was trying to do the same thing. Gowalla did a few things. So it, it's not something that's new, but I think it is something that people are more aware of. And so mm. Facebook will probably be a little bit more careful. Um, the fact that I'm in Canada also means that, you know, after me living in the U.S., I saw more of this and now I'm not. I don't know what that means, uh, but I'm definitely not seeing anything right now. And it makes sense simply because I'm in Canada now. Right. I mean, at least Facebook, uh, Facebook has got their uh, t targeted feed uh, working. <laughs> at least pretty well, exactly. uh, assuming that, of course, you're no longer interested in the politics <laughs> of the United States. <laughs> Esteban Contreras is the Director of Strategy at Sprinkler. That's Sprinkler without an E. Uh, let folks know before we let you go how they can uh, learn more about what you do. Yeah, go to twitter.com slash social nerdia. And if you want to learn about what Sprinkler does, uh, go to sprinkler.com. That's a really good uh, Twitter handle, social nerdia. I like that. Thanks. Good times. Good times. Thanks, Esteban. Thank you. And happy Halloween in Canada. All right. Speaking of Halloween, you know, it, it's, come on. You just got to give me one Halloween story. Okay. So there's a Twitter hashtag that you may or may not have seen if you're a Twitter user that you can actually have a little fun with today on Halloween. It is hashtag scary stories in five words. And if this sounds kind of familiar, this is an ongoing theme um, over at the show Midnight, which is uh, on Comedy Central and hosted by Chris Hardwick. Uh, at least a lot of my friends are always participating in, in, in some of these games that they play. But 
this Halloween, the scary stories in five words is pretty funny and includes gems like <clears throat> mom, dad, this is Coolio and no Wi-Fi at your house. And my personal favorite on toilet, no toilet paper. Now that last one actually came from Charmin Toilet Paper's official company account on Twitter. So well played Charmin. Well played. Of course, you can search Twitter for the hashtag scary stories in five words and find your own favorite or, of course, contribute as well. And that is it for this super spooky edition of Tech News Tonight. Thanks, everybody, for being here. You can subscribe to this show. Whoa. My black cat just went a little bit crazy. I guess it really is a spooky show. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program Monday through Friday. That's Tech News Today, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Of course, Tech News Tonight airs live at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you next week. Happy Halloween. I'm Sarah Lane. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.